I do want to get more into that, but I want to back up just a little bit to when you're talking about sure. um, building something from scratch. With, uh, with Serenity, why was it that you guys were doing everything in-house? Is it just because you can, or was there like some other reason for it? Uh, it was just to have fun, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, I guess most people who listen to your show probably are familiar with Serenity OS and, at and least, the backstory. Maybe but... they haven't looked into it super deeply. I'm sure they've at least heard about the project at least right. a couple times. Yeah. So the, the, the backstory quick version is that in 2018, um, I had been living with a severe drug problem and I got into a rehab program. And um, after completing that, um, I found myself with just a lot of time um, because I was used to filling my my days with drugs and debauchery. And uh, without that, you have, I don't know, like 16 hours in a day that you're supposed to do something else. Um, and so I just got into, well, I tried a bunch of things, but I got into programming, which I've done my whole life. Um, and I needed some big project to fill up all that time. And I built a bunch of things and then eventually realized I had built a, a small kernel. A, um, what was it? Like a kernel, a file system, a file, windowing system, and something else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I realized that, hey, if I just smoosh these together, it's basically a GUI operating system. Um, and then I just need to keep working on it. Mm. And so I did that. And that. I decided to call it Serenity OS because in rehab, we use the uh, Serenity prayer to sort of um, align ourselves with the idea that um, that we have to um, accept some things in life that we can't change and we have to uh, work on, on the things that are under our control. And I want it to be forever associated with that idea. Uh, so I named it that and that has worked out beautifully because um, People refer to me uh, all over the world as the Serenity guy. So, uh, <laughs> plan work beautifully. Perfect title. I like that. <laughs> uh, so now I can't run away from that. I, uh, I'm always reminded. So that's <laughs> that's working out really well. And yeah, the the idea was that since I just started working on random stuff and putting it together, um, I just stayed that way. Whenever somebody wanted to add something, like people came to me because I was on GitHub, they came like, oh, let me add this um, open source library mm -hmm. so we can do this. And I always said, nah, let's just build it ourselves. Like, how hard can it be? Um, and then more people joined and everybody was encouraged to do everything themselves. And it just, it just went uh, down the rabbit hole of building all kinds of things ourselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's how we ended up with, you know, like a complete cryptography library. Um, that has like all the different algorithms and key exchange and um, elliptic curves and stuff and uh, graphics libraries, photo editing, stuff like that. <laughs> you know, uh, it's this, a lot of fun. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of a. Uh, <laughs> this kind of reminds you of the the Linus Linux email. I'm doing a free operating system. Just a, a hobby won't be being professional like GNU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was a bit like that, I guess. Uh, looking back, it was very humble. Um, Although I think there are there were some constraints on Serenity OS that Linus didn't have, mm -hmm. and so um, for better or worse, you know, like Serenity hasn't evolved in the same way that Linux did, mm -hmm. um, because I guess because of this whole like let's build everything ourselves, mm -hmm. um, Linux ended up like leaning heavily on on other things, as as uh, Richard likes to point out. Right. <laughs> Richard... yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very, yeah. Well, it, it's kind of funny that you have the idea was like, oh, I'm being professional like GNU, but nowadays GNU basically doesn't exist without Linux. The relationship there is kind of flipped. Yeah, very much, very much. But of course, uh, you know, Stallman was more right in the past. Mm -hmm. um, GNU was, was the big thing. Um, and yeah, we we didn't we didn't sort of um, connect with any existing projects. We just mm -hmm. did everything ourselves, and so um, we were a bit of a strange in the open source world because yes, everything is open source, but we're not actually interacting with the ecosystem at all. Like, mm -hmm. other than using um, open source compiler um, like GCC or Clang, but we just built everything ourselves, and so. Um, yeah, that, that was a bit unusual. 
Yeah, if you decided to uh, build the compiler yourself, I feel like that, that would have been where you stopped and you wouldn't have ever got to the operating system part. <laughs> it's possible, yeah. Um, we, we did start building a compiler at one point for a new language, not uh -huh. for C++. Um, but I don't work on Serenity OS anymore, so I've sort of left the project in the hands of the, um, of the remaining maintainers mm -hmm. because... When we forked Ladybird, I realized that I'm just spending all my time working on the browser, you know, and it's not right for me to sit here and say what Serenity OS should do when there's a community of people who love working on it. Mm -hmm. um, and they have all kinds of ideas that they want to do with it. And I don't want to interfere with right. those ideas too much, I guess. Um, but the, but it's been good, I think. You know, now now everybody gets to to focus on the things that they want to do. And I check in with the project every now and then. They're still working on stuff, so that's cool. Um, I hope everybody's happy after the split, even though it was a little bit... Uh, it's, it's always difficult to divorce, um, mm -hmm. whether in software or in, in anything else. But um, I think it worked out. Uh, and I completely forgot what your question was. <laughs> no, no. Um, uh, we'll just... That's a good question. <laughs> Something about like what I think is we we started ready? on building for everything from scratch. That's where we started from, and we somehow got right. There. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Why why build from scratch? Right, right, right. Yeah. So it was just for fun, mm -hmm. just to keep myself busy. And then people wanted to join because they saw how much fun I was having, and I said, "Okay, you can join, but you got to build everything from scratch. No taking other libraries." Mm -hmm. um, and it became like our niche, I guess. Mm -hmm. And people heard about our project. They're like, wait, there's a project where they're building everything from scratch and I can come there and build anything from scratch. And so people joined to build like things that they were just curious about how one would build. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, uh, like a sound editing software or like uh, music production stuff. Or, right. Um, a lot of games, like uh, desktop games, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it became like a playground almost for hackers, I think. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was just far away from what Linux became. Linux wanted to just uh, be, um, I guess, like a cheap um, alternative to Unix because Linus felt at the time that, hey, these Unix workstations at school are great, but I can't afford to get one at home. Right. He, he said in the uh, Linux 1.0 announcement, uh, it was cheaper to build a Unix kernel than it was to buy you a Unix license. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so so uh, quite different motivations um, between the two projects, but um, initially very scrappy, both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, also Serenity OS, if you haven't seen it before, it, it famously has a very year 2000 um, Microsoft look. Mm. Um, uh, the, the look and feel of the system is extremely inspired by Windows 2000, thereabouts. Yes. And, uh... <laughs> okay, yeah. I, I, I'd seen it before, but I couldn't picture it. But no, that's exactly what I would call it. Yeah. And that was also like, I just grew up around using computers around that time. Mm -hmm. It was a formative experience for me, and I just decided, hey, it's going to look like that. Mm -hmm. um, 